All right. Gordon, we good? Everybody yep. good? Okay, Del Jackson here, Andy Herr. Uh, this is our third, fourth, fourth installment, third installment of uh, LO Hoops Zoom. So we got a special guest tonight. We got Coach Chris George from Northern Lebanon. And um, I've seen him play once or twice. I didn't catch him last year, but, but he's, uh, he's one of our favorites on the Twitter. And he always takes care of us with some information, which is good. I mean, he'll, he'll, give, us, uh, he'll give us some rundowns of, of the game. It's like so-and-so scored and so-and-so had rebounds. And it's awesome because we'll put that out. We'll put that out on the Twitter and retweet it and, you know, get some kids some love. So, uh, basically, tonight we're going to do a little bit different. I see Andy's got his Viking gear on. Mm -hmm. got a lot of hoops because, like, I don't know how it is, but Andy seems to get gear of these coaches and Dell doesn't. So maybe Dell got to do a better job of PR. So I'll, I'll turn it over to Andy and, and Coach George, and I'm going to kind of listen a little bit. And if we get stuck, then I'll, I'll hop in if I have a question. All right, Andy, you and Coach George, go to it, buddy. Thanks. Dad. All right, Coach. Hey, first question I have for you is, um, for me, every section in our league kind of tells a story. Like you have section one, which is the big boys and the, the blue bloods and all those kinds of schools. You have section two, which is kind of that hodgepodge of the, those old section one teams and the teams that could get up there, but are kind of in section two. You have section three, which I call the football division because you look at the schools that are in there and a lot, and the fact that a lot of their final scores look like football scores. They don't really like to get into the forties and fifties all that much. And then you have section five, which is the little guys and the privates. And then we come to section four, which I'm not just saying this to blow smoke up your backside because I do like the shirt. Uh, and I thank you for that. But for me, I think, I think section, you were late for the interview because you were looking, it was pretty, pretty low down in the closet there for trying to find out. <laughs> okay. Anyway, <laughs> anyway, um, like I was saying, section four to me is my favorite out of all of them just because. I don't know what the heck to make out of it. Like, there's no, there's no story. There's no cohesion with that. I mean, just think about this for a second. You have schools that have mailing addresses in three different counties. You have basically every color of the rainbow. You got red, blue, green, purple, yellow. Uh, <laughs> you have Octorera, which is in Delaware. You have you guys who are at the base of a mountain and is the biggest snake pit in the entire league, which by the way, you might like to know this. I was talking to Coach Sigmund of Cacalico today. He wants to play at LVC. He wants a neutral site game. He doesn't <laughs> want to get up there next year. Um, We've been offered by a whole bunch of teams that are supposed to come to our place to play on neutral sites. It's kind of weird like that. <laughs> uh, I don't know how that happens. And to a man, everybody, everybody hates playing up there. I mean, they all do. But And then you look at the teams that are actually in the section. You have Lancaster Catholic, who's Lancaster Catholic. You have Elko, who proved this year that they can back up two full back-to-back -back cycles and make states. You have Octorera, which is, you know, has the ability to go on a deep postseason run in states even on any given year. And then you have Donegal, which almost hit for the cycle not even a whole decade ago when in uh, the section, leagues, districts, and states. And then, like I said, you have you guys too. So I just want to know what you make of where you're at currently with Northern Lebanon playing those types of schools? Because I'm thinking of you in a couple of different ways. I'm thinking of a dad, a teacher, a coach, like grading papers and stuff like that. Because let's be honest, you're not in section one where you can hop on a bus on a Tuesday night and play at a school where you guys have borders that touch. It just doesn't work out for that, like that way. So explain to me how you feel about that position where you're at. And for someone that comes from the big school ranks like I do, it's, it's an entirely different world. So if you can just kind of speak to that. Yeah, it's been, uh, you know, obviously you guys have covered it pretty well the last couple of years. It's been really competitive and there's been some great teams down here. Elko has been, has been awesome for the last four or five years. Um, Catholic is always right there, of course. So, you know, it's, it's not like, you know, hey, section four, as you go down, it's, it's the weaker conference. A lot of times, you know, Catholic and, and some of the teams in our section are beating up on the section three teams. So you have some really good players, but you're right. It's not section one. You know, I, I work camps in the summer. I see kids that are sitting on the bench at on section one teams that I know would come down and do well in section three, four, and five. So it's, it is a different level depth wise, but uh, there, there are some great players down here. Uh, There's some, some really good coaches. Like you said, it's kind of all over the place. 
you know, you got Donegal out here, you got us up north, you got Octorera in another zip in another state, basically. Um, you got all the different colors. I mean, like you said, we're it, it's not none of them are easy trips. Elko is is our big rival, obviously, obviously being you know pretty much next door neighbors. So that one's not difficult. Um, but we've had some really good, you know, I wouldn't have thought the last few years that we would have had great games with Dr. Rara and, uh, and Lancaster Catholic, especially after we lost, you know, two years ago, we lost like 11 seniors off that team where we made a nice right. run. I didn't think we were going to really be able to battle that as well as we did with Dr. Rara the last couple of years in Catholic. But, you know, last year we lost at the end of the game to Dr. Rara at home. This year we got him at home. Uh, Catholic, we geez, we're up seven at Catholic last year um, and let one slip. And then this year, you know, at home, we were, you know, down by five in the fourth quarter where we, I thought we outplayed them, but, um, you know, it was one of those weird kind of nights, but um, it, it's been interesting um, and it's been fun. And, uh, you know, again, as long as you're competitive and we've been really competitive, even after, you know, losing those seniors the last couple of years, these last two years, we knew we we're going to be a little bit of a rebuild um but you know to be as competitive as we were was you know it you know as a coach there's nothing worse than than going into games and getting smacked by really good teams and we did it's not not as if there weren't a game it wasn't a game or two where we got where we got run over certainly at Elko this year that was <clears throat> that was quite the game down there um but we, we played them pretty tough at home until you know heading into the fourth so anyway it's like I said it's it's uh it's an interesting section for sure as you said Andy yeah Take me back a couple few years when you took the job at NL, because for those that are familiar with the situation, it was kind of a, it was a funky situation to put it mildly. And I looked you up and I even found an old YouTube clip. I mean, you had that thing rolling at Pine Grove. Um, so tell me, tell me about basically what made that move attractive to you at that point in time, because like I said, you had that thing humming up there pretty nicely. Yeah, sure. The, um, you know, I used to be at the, in the Elko program 10, 15 years ago. Um, it's funny you had Sigmund on, you know, he was down at the lower level. I was doing JV junior high back then. Um, and I was lucky enough to, I was actually teaching at Pine Grove. Coaching job opened up there, obviously on the girls' side, but um, great opportunity, great gig. Um, we had some young kids coming in and it was just good timing. Um, you know, obviously we won a couple of district titles, a league title. So that was awesome. Um, I, we, when I left, I, we had a freshman class that came in with five or six kids that was off the charts that I really think was going to make some noise. But, uh, you know, getting back to the boys' side, you know, I have two sons. Um, and I love girls' basketball. There's something about coaching girls that is, is different. But, it, you know, basketball is basketball. But it was nice to get back to the boys' side, nice to get closer to home. Um, living in Myerstown and all, it was a little, little, you know, not going over the mountain in Schuylkill County. But I love coaching in Schuylkill County. District 11. You know, I learned a ton up there, getting in the state playoffs three years or so, um, you know, playing all over the state. We were down, you know, playing Imhotep a couple times down in Philly, uh, York Catholic, Delone Catholic, when they had the girl who went to Duke, um, Donald's All-American. We faced her two years in a row in, in states. So, uh, you know, it was an awesome opportunity. But, you know, coming into Northern Lebanon, I just thought um, you had some talent there. Uh, closer to home. I really wasn't thinking I would get a teaching job when I took the job, but it just worked out a few months later. So the teaching job is here now, and it all kind of clicked. And uh, I guess now we're about six years in. This will be the sixth year. Hey, hey yeah. Andy, I, I got a question on a follow-up. I, I know you do. Go ahead. Let me let me let me ask this a coach because I'm I'm always curious. What was the what was the difference? of of um of the ll compared to school Co county as far as style as far as anything um if you're talking the the cool thing about school Co county and i've said it to guys down here as well boys and girls play on different nights up there which is really kind of neat in that the gyms are packed every every night the gyms are really well really well packed and they're smaller schools mm -hmm. you know outside of pottsville and blue mountain and you know, Lee Heighton, uh, most of the bigger District 11 schools are down towards Allentown. Um, so uh, to, to the ability to be able to have your games on different nights, the whole school is at every game, gives a different feel on the boys and girls side. It also gives you a chance, like I, I saw a ton of boys games there. I used to even help the boys out once in a while, going to play with them. And 
and do some stuff. I think the top teams up there are as good as, as anyone around. Um, you know, Pottsville is typically in, in states a lot of times. Blue Mountain is a quality program. Dustin Wirt used to play at E-Town. Um, and District 11 is pretty tough. I would say overall, boys-wise, as you get to the smaller schools, the depth isn't there. That's where the LL has it, much more skill. And, um, you know, you guys have talked about even on the Twitter feed, mid Penn is probably here. LL is mm -hmm. probably here, LL and Burke. Schuylkill County, boys-wise, probably a little bit underneath of that. Um, but, but that being said, look, some of the top teams there are really tough. Oh, yeah. you know, they can have years like, you know, Pottsville is a, is a juggernaut up there right now. Yeah, I'm just curious. All right, Andy, sorry to take your thunder, buddy. No, you're good. I thought I was going to steal your question, but I'll steal it back from you. So I know the boss man wants to know this because he's a coach um, when, at his core. What's basically the difference between coaching boys and coaching girls? Um, this is no knock on girls. It's, I think – you know, the, the speed of the game and the skill is probably um, a couple years behind in terms of, you know, I would equate coaching girls. It's more, you know, the speed is more of a JV game on the boys' side or maybe junior high. That being said, like, I, I shouldn't have said skill. You know, a lot of ways the girls are much more skilled. Uh, right. You know, their shooting ability, their mid-range ability. That was the first thing that blew me away when I was coaching girls was, you know, like, they hit shots off the glass and from angles – that you're like, you just don't see boys making those shots. But that's because boys, you know, anytime they get around the rim in practice, they're just trying to dunk everything or throw half court shots. So, you know, girls just don't have that. They're not chucking half court shots. They're not trying to alley you to themselves nonstop. Um, I would say this, the biggest difference with girls is that when you tell them something, you don't get, and hey, I was, I was a high school kid. I was not probably the easiest to coach. I'm sure guys on here saw me in high school and played against me. Um, when you tell a girl something, she will, they will do it for you immediately and mm -hmm. they'll do it over and over and over again until you're like, you know, I, I really just told you just to read that. I didn't say you had to do it all the time. Whereas with a boy, you tell them something, they're probably going to try to try to prove you wrong in the first two or three times. And then eventually they'll go, all right, I, I guess that guy knows what he's talking about. I'll, I'll go with, with what, with what he's saying. So, and, and that's not every guy, you know, some kids are obviously a lot more coachable. It's just, it's boys. You know, they're a little more immature. Girls are a little bit more mature. You get more – that being said, you get a little drama on the girls' side. <laughs> you know, the team dynamic is a little more important on the boys' side. Chemistry matters. But, you know, I've also seen a lot of guys' teams – I'm sure you see it and hear about it – where you could have two dudes who they may not talk to each other at all off the court or like each other at all, but on the court they're great. Ooh, you know, it's, right. you, get, you get some of that on the, on the boys' side, which is a little different. Take, take me to the here and now with your team. I've been pretty vocal about this. I think you have arguably the best backcourt in the league, and not a lot of people know about them. And they're two baby-faced assassins. So <laughs> they're, they're the prototypical guys when, you know, if you're playing pickup, they're probably not going to be your first couple picks, but they'll break your heart if you don't pick them on your team. Uh, tell me about your backcourt. Introduce them to the masses and uh, what you think about them and your nucleus that's coming back next year. Yeah, you know, for the first year, Peyton Wolf got a ton of publicity. Obviously, freshman year, he burst onto the scene and had 50, 60 threes. Little guy, um, you know, really took a lot of attention uh, from defenses, et cetera. And then this past year, Owen Treadway, who's about the same size, about 5'4", five, 5'5", five, five, probably weighs less than Peyton. He's a year older. He, Owen's going to be a senior. Uh, Peyton's going to be a junior this year. So, um to be honest with you, I, we didn't quite foresee Owen having the year that he did. Um, we were hoping Peyton would have another really big year and take the next step, and we think he did. Halfway through the year, I think he really started to step his game up. But Owen was a – we knew Owen was good. We knew he had the skill. Like you said, you know, he's, he's a heck of a player. Would you pick him first and pick up? Probably not. You know, he's, he's a tinier kid, and he's not real thick. But the kid just plays, and he's scrappy. And I thought that was the biggest difference he – he made this this year this offseason we really challenged him to, to be a little scrappier mostly from the standpoint and we did the same thing to Peyton too it's not easy playing two five three kids or five four um it, you know you can sometimes get away with one even there you get put in a bad spot with you know whatever defense you're in coaches are they're going to come after you and there's only so much you can do about it um, but you got two dudes on the court that are that size um 
you better bring something to the table. You, you know, we try to tell those guys, you have to get, you have to be a little meaner and a little tougher to play against. Um, and Owen really relished that this year. Um, really had a streak come out of it, come out in him, come out in him. And the more minutes he got, the, the better he got. You could see it on the court. And he's a playmaker. He's not just a shooter. Neither, neither one of them are just shooters. Um, but Owen especially does a great job of getting in the paint and, and setting his teammates up. And he's a real team kid. He's a great kid. Um, you know, he hasn't had the, the, the easiest uh, upbringing and all in, in life. And he's had some tough challenges behind him. But he's just – all he does is respond. The, the kids love him. Um, he's the kind of kid that, you know, for two years, he wasn't always on the court. You know, like I said, we didn't – I didn't know that he was going to be starting this year, to be honest with you. He just made me start him. And uh, it doesn't matter if he's on the court or not. He's the first kid off the bench cheering for all his teammates. There's so many pictures and videos where somebody on our team hit a big shot or getting a steal. And Owen's the first guy off that bench. And it's no knock on anybody else, but that's hard for high school kids. I mean, it was hard for, for me to deal with. Anytime you're not in the game, can you be a great teammate? Can you be happy for your team? I, and I don't think he's faking it. it it's, it's real with Owen. He really wants the team to be great. And obviously we all want to be on the court. He does too. And he's, he took advantage of it. So, you know, I talked a lot about Owen there. Obviously Peyton had a lot of pressure on him this season. People knew about him coming in. Um, but again, Owen took a little pressure off him there with some shooting and now having two guys who can really light it up. It's a little harder for teams to guard us now. Um, once Owen sort of took off, we started spreading teams out a little bit more and it was a little bit easier to do some of those things offensively you know, our offense really kind of took off a um, little more dribble drive, you know, some stuff that other guys run and uh, took advantage of them offensively. Defensively, it's another challenge, um, but that's that's why we get the big bucks, right? There you, you know, go. That kind of stuff. <laughs> hey, um, we were joking off camera before we started, but uh, anybody that knows you knows you're not one to kind of hide your opinion. So I'm going to let you be the czar of basketball right now for the next minute or so. You can change anything on the local uh, state or national level, and the floor is yours. One thing, whatever you as want. As you want, as many as you want, coach. All right, but I'll you got a time yours. frame now. There's ten, a time frame. Ten things. I'll start number ten. No, I'm just kidding. Get the scroll I, out. Honestly, I, the biggest thing I would say is a shot clock. I know you were thinking I'd say something else, but um, I really think, uh, and I know it's hard. We have a ton of schools here in PA, but I think. It would help our kids go into the next level. I know it's not the, the end of the world or impossible to figure out how to play with a shot clock when you go to college, but, but kids from other states do have a little bit of a leg up on our kids when they do that and get to the next level. Um, and I just think it changes the game. I know it's cost prohibitive, potentially, uh, hiring somebody else to sit there on the shot clock and to get that into all the gyms. But, you know, the end of games, I, I can't – and look, I've, I, I've done it. I've had all state point guards. I had the point guard – you know, Caleb Light, who's at Maasai now, who was, you know, player of the year in section three a couple of years ago. You know, when we got into the fourth quarter, the ball was in his hands. Mm -hmm. and we were milking the clock and we were milking possessions and we were getting to the free throw line. And that's what you do in high school basketball. Um, but I don't know that it makes for the prettiest ending to every game. Um, it certainly drags some games out. Teams are holding the ball, running four corners with seven or eight minutes to go in the game. Um, now again, there's always the old timers that say, Hey, that's basketball. You know, that's North Carolina. That's how you play. You want to get the ball, get some steals. Um, but I just think you, you can see it at the college game. And even in the pros, you've got games that you don't have to deal with that excessive fouling until probably the last minute or two, because you know, you know, if you have a shot clock and you're down by six or seven, you only need a couple of stops. Every team has to shoot the ball. You get a couple stops, you get a couple scores. You can get back in the game. So I, I would, you know, for PA schools, I, I would think, and I'd love to see the shot clock. Um, that's not a political thing or anything. It's probably just a cost, just a cost thing, I, I would think, for a lot of schools. Mm -hmm. Last thing I have for you, um, I asked Coach Sigmund this last week, and there's really no wrong answer, but what do you think normal looks like once we come out the other side of this? And that can be from a teaching perspective. That can be from a coaching perspective. Like, one of the first things that's come to my mind is the handshake line. That's probably gone because yeah. who's knows if anyone's going to do handshakes in the business world. I mean, yeah. what, what do you think as you assess this new normal that we're all living in right now and the ramifications? Yeah, I don't know. It's kind of strange. My son was in a, 
an AAU tournament at Spooky Nook here right before all this hit. And they were doing, you know, they were doing the elbow bumps going through the line. But it does make you wonder, like, you, you basically play the basketball game against the other team where you're touching and right. bumping. And then all of a sudden at the end of the game, you're not going to touch hands. It's a little, yeah, it's a little strange. Um, I don't know what to say. You know, guys with, with much pot higher pay grades are going to have to make some tough decisions here. Um, you know, and they're going to get a lot of the scrutiny whichever way you go, whether we, we, we stay closed much longer, whether we open quicker. Um, what, is it, what does it look like when we have games? Are we having crowds? Are we having fans? Are, is everybody going to have to come to the LL Hoop site to see every game? Are we just going to have kids in a gym playing and um, we're just going to stream all the games? I, you know, I don't know. Or maybe just parents can attend. But it, it's just hard. And you guys probably see it and hear about it. You know, colleges are even saying, like, if they're not going to have school, how do you play games? Okay. And that's not going to happen. So, it, I don't know. It's going to be tough I mean, to say that sports is going to be different. If our kids are in school every day next to each other, it would be kind of weird to have different rules for games. Mm -hmm. You know, if the kids are all interacting at school, then I, I don't know the sense in, in how we would change that sports-wise. But, but you never know. I mean, this is pretty unprecedented. Obviously, after 9-11, a lot of things changed for a long time, and, and this could be the same thing here. Um, I hope not for kids. I hope things don't change too much, you know, because, you know, if you start changing too much, it's the game we love, but you do what you have to do. Right. You do what you got to do to keep people safe. Yeah. yeah. Okay, let me, let me follow in here, Andy, then. Um, I'm thinking with, with Coach, Coach has been at it for a while. I'm not going to say he's old, but uh, he's been at it for a while. So what, what, I, what I'd like to know, from your point of view, what has changed from the game from when you started coaching till right now? High school-wise, obviously, um, for the most part. Although it's changed, I think it's the – it's not the elephant in the room. It's kind of what everybody knows. The, the shooting ability of kids is, is off the charts. Um, you know, I'll use, uh, it made me think of Sigmund, you know, with Lesko from a couple years ago, that kid's probably the, probably the best shooter I've, I've seen in this area for a long, long time. You know, he used to stand out at half court and shoot them like they were free throws, you know, maybe funk, um, Bohannon right now. I'm not sure there's a better shooter than Bohannon in the in the LL. Yeah, yeah he's got a nice mid-range game. Oh, it's, I love and, that mid-range game. Yeah, I was down at the game in Philly, too, against Imhotep, and he was shooting threes like they were free throws. Mm -hmm. um, and he gets up, and he's got a beautiful stroke. You know, those three guys. But the, the thing is, there's just so many kids now that can shoot. It's probably the Steph Curry effect. But, um, you know, obviously we have a bunch of kids on our team that, that are chucking threes now and can shoot it. But it really has changed the game in terms of spacing and um, things like that. It's changed offenses quite a bit. You know, when I first got into coaching 15, 20 years ago, at least, you know, you may know this, Dell, everybody was a motion guy. Mm -hmm. Everyone was hardcore man to man in your shorts. Yep. Yep. Um, and nowadays now, and, and what happened was I think eventually guys just started switching everything and they took the motion out of it, mm -hmm. um, which then turned into dribble drive. When I was at Elko the first time we were, um, we were, I think, the first team in the LL to put dribble drive in. Gosh, that was 12, 15 years ago when Calipari was at Memphis. Uh, we actually went down to Kentucky, and he wasn't even at Kentucky yet, but we were putting dribble drive in. I think Township was running some dribble drive back then. Yeah. yeah. Let, me, let, me, let me interrupt for a second. Oh, yeah. yeah, go ahead. You, you keep going, but, but as, as I'm listening to you at a dribble drive, I think everybody in Lebanon County runs that daggone dribble drive. I, you know, I'm mean, like, all right, Elko's doing it, Cress is doing it. It's like, okay, everybody's doing it, so there's got to be something good to it. Yeah, and uh, again, I mean, everyone knows the history there a little bit, but, um, you know, like I said, after we ran it a little bit, we, we didn't have a ton of success with it back then. We had some good athletes. The guy, I think, who really around here – made it made everyone rethink it. It probably was Lineball at Anvil when he he had his run there. He had a bunch of kids that yeah. no knock on those kids. I don't think they were super athletic. Yeah. You know, the Blanding kid and some of them, but he really got those kids to buy into that. He spread you out and he had shooters. And I think that was the big the big uh 
I wouldn't say it was misleading, but everyone calls it dribble drive because you had to have athletes that were quick and could get to the rim. But in reality, what you need to run dribble drive is shooters. And he showed you that. Those kids weren't the fastest or quickest kids. You put shooters in a dribble drive, um, and it's tough. And then eventually, you know, Crest came in and they started running it right when Tommy Smith showed up. Um, Brad, you know, Connors at Elko, I think about five years, went back to the dribble drive with, with that young squad that he had with Bohannon and Coletti and them. And they were, you know, that was, they were really tough to stop in that. Um, almost better than when they had Lawrence and all because they were tiny and they were young and they just spread you out and they had four or five kids that could just stroke it. So, you know, I'd, I'd say that's the biggest difference is, is, is you've got to come up with defensively different ways to, different ways to defend those things. I mean, you are seeing probably more teams play some zone. Um, then, um, does, does, does anybody, does anybody, I don't, I don't get to see you guys that much. I, I see once in a while I'll get down, I'll see Lancaster Catholic play in some of the teams. Um, but is there, is there, um, Anybody that's really focusing on post-up players? I know you got to have some some size and some beef, maybe. But I mean, what, what are you seeing any of that, or is this teams doing special sets just to get the ball inside once in a while? Well, we do because my two guards are five three, and my center I think is five ten. Okay. So every single team, and it's hard to scout because a lot of teams don't show it till they come into our gym. Okay. Um, and we've had obviously with with Kamwaga, um, Elko had the big guys the last couple of years. I mean, heck, Bohannon, they, put, they were putting Bohannon into the post on us um, a bunch this year. That's how big he is compared to some of our guys. Um, well, let's, Dr. Not, Dr. Let's, not give, let's not give away any secrets, but I'm thinking as a coach, it's like, okay, you got, you got a 5-4, a 5-4, and a 5-10. What's your defensive philosophy sometimes when teams are doing that? You don't have to give away the, you know, the, the secrets, but it's like – do you double a little bit or do you front? Or you do a little bit of this or a little bit of that, you know, kind of mix it up. Yep. All that. Okay. You mix it up. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's um, good. Listen, you, you do what you can do. There's a lot of different things. You said some, I'm not giving away any secrets. The guys we play against watch a lot of film. They're yeah. really good coaches. They're prepared. I'm not saying anything they don't see. We've doubled a lot. We've tried fronting. Um, we, we brought the double from different places. Um, you know, but it gets difficult. Like even fronting, you know, imagine if you're in man to man and you're fronting and your weak side help is Peyton Wolf. It's no disrespect to him, but if you're lobbing that ball, what, what's the kid going to do in a help situation? So we've had to come up with, a, a, you know, some different things defensively to, to sort of attack that. Obviously, zone is, has helped us a little bit, although that's not perfect. Again, zone, you know, I heard you guys ask Sigmund that last week in, the, in, the, uh, in his interview, like if you could play whatever defense, if you had the perfect kid in mind, you know, zone is great, not so much when you have five, three kids, but when you have long kids like Syracuse has. So, mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. you know, we, we'll, we'll play the zone for the most part just to change it up and try to keep kids in certain spots. Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm seeing the yellow. I'm seeing the yellow back there, the bumblebee, the yellow all the way around. I mean, it, I think, I think I played up there, not in that gym, but in the old gym as a player. I, yeah. I don't know if you knew, but I graduated from Manville, yeah. Cleona, so I got a pretty good feel for some of the Lebanon County uh, things there. But I think I think when you guys get people in that gym, it it, it it's quite a it's quite a home a home crowd, and it, it's it's something different. I, I think that's just me personally. I coached up there, I played up there. How how do you how does that school? I know you teach here, but how do you guys get those people to show up? I know some schools have problems getting people to show up in the stands, but I know you guys do a pretty good job of getting people there on any, on any game night. Yeah, and, and I can't take credit for that. Before I got here, I think they won the Penn Live Student Section mm -hmm. uh, Award when uh, Sam Light was here running around. You know, and a lot of credit to Sam. He got a lot of these younger kids playing basketball, um, getting them excited about the game and, and got a lot of fans out here. Uh, the girls' team has helped in a lot of ways, crowd-wise. Um, you know, we get a lot of those, those same people come to our games and vice versa, and, and both games are awesome. So the atmosphere in here, you know, you can you probably could have the same number of people here in this gym, and it sounds packed, and if you put them in, you know, you put them at Crest or LS, mm -hmm. it's going to feel empty or garden spot. Um, so it, it does sort of and, – and then obviously if you can keep the games close, it does give you that feel 
you know, I, I know Andy was at our central game this year, the overtime game. And um, it, it does, it just gets so loud. It's, it's part of it's the acoustics. It's not real fun in, in practice. I'll, I'll tell you that. No, not it's, good. huh? No, gosh. It was when I first started coaching here in, in practice, it was like, you, this, this, this has to go. I can't, I can't take it, but um, it's worth it. I guess when, when you think about the game night, so. Well, we got, we got a couple minutes here. Um, how about, how about you just give us a, a, a breakdown of your staff and guys that have been with you and, and how that works. I know a lot of people, they don't, they don't look at a head coach being in charge of the whole program. I mean, the parents do, but it's like there's so many parts of what you do that aren't seen, especially with organizing staff and things. Can you talk a little bit about your staff and, and what you've done with those guys? Yeah, sure. Um, you know, I'm proud. Our, our junior high has a great staff. I have, um, and you probably know, Mike Miller used to be the AD at Lebanon Catholic. And oh, yeah. He used to be my coach when I was at Lebanon Catholic. He's my freshman coach on the junior high team. So him, along with uh, Ben Baird, who also does football stuff, he was a high school basketball player and a college football player. They do a great job with our junior high. Uh, the kids really like those guys. Um, at the varsity level, um, we have Brad Kreiser, who was a former player here. He played with Sam Light. He's a younger guy in that era. Um, the kids really relate to him awesome. He's at, he's, and the nice thing is he's, he's still young enough to get up and down with the guys, and he's a bigger yeah, kid. Yeah, so. yeah. yeah. Um, Tyler Wrights was another kid. Um, I actually coached, coached against him a little bit when I was at Elko. Another bigger body kid. He's a great guy. Um, now, Brad's the JV guy. Ty's just a varsity assistant. But, again, two big guys that are young and can give us a really good look in practice. Um, so it's nice to have some, some, younger, some younger blood there with Coach Baird and, and Coach Ty and, um, and Brad. Um, and uh, Coach Wolf, Peyton's dad. Okay. Um, who's also an assistant as well. He's been with me since day one. Um, he's a great guy who, you know, he's sort of a fitness freak, you know, grindhouse. He gets after the kids a little bit with those kind of things. So he's, uh, he's, a, he's a favorite of the, of the kids as well. Yeah. One question leads to another. How about, what do you guys do with your youth program? Are you involved in the, in the, you know, the little bitty guys that have travel teams? Do you guys keep it in house? How, how do you work with that? Um, I would say like, that's, that's the biggest thing that you find from program to program. And I've been involved with, you know, at least three programs now where it's really different from school to school, how much interaction the varsity coach has in the program at Elko. It's a great youth program. There's some great guys running that stuff over there. Um, but it's, it's a little more disconnected. They do their thing and, right, and right. You, you do your thing as a high school coach. And um, we always got along well, fine. When I was there at Pine Grove, it was almost a complete opposite. I, I walked in the door and they said, so what are you doing with your youth program? Mm. Um, so it was just completely different. You had total control up there. Okay. Um, so, which, you know, is you know, obviously it's pros and cons. You're dealing with a lot more emails, a lot more phone calls, right, right, right. issues, stuff like that. But you have a lot of say in how your, your programs work in terms of in-house. How many teams are you doing in travel? Are you doing a lot of in-house stuff? Um, Northern Lebanon is probably a mix. I have a decent amount of say. You know, we, we have a big hand in our travel teams here, and our, okay. our youth program has really come a long way over the last couple of years. Coach Porky, um, Coach Wolf were really big in, in that three, four, five years ago when I got here. Coach Bouchette sort of got the travel stuff, stuff going right before I got here, which yeah, is yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. Um, so um, I, I think we're doing a really nice job. We have some nice, you know, I, I posted a bunch of stuff on Twitter, our third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade. We got a bunch of younger groups right now. They're really doing well at the younger level. I think the program's going to, the program's going to see some, some good times there. Not that we are now, um, but I, I think the future is bright. Awesome. Hey, hey, we're running up against the clock. Um, I, I want to thank you so much for, for participating with us for showing us the gym, for sharing your thoughts. I mean, we, we, in, in all honesty, when you send that stuff out, what the kids do and, and giving them a little love on the rebounds and the assists, even if you win or lose it, I just think it's awesome. I mean, we, we retweet that. And uh, I really like your idea about live streaming games and LO hoops would be there. If anybody wants to use our platform, I'm telling you, we, we would, we would love that. We have the space and all that stuff. And, we can get kids to do it. We, we can do a lot of stuff, but that's something that we'll put on our plate and I'll talk to Ron Kennedy about it. If, if you know, however this thing 
works out. But if it gets goofy, like we can't, you know, like you were saying in front of no people, we might have, we might have the platform to at least share some, some videos from people if, if uh, you know, in-house and stuff. It's, like that. it's, you know how it is. It's weird how things like this will really open up new yeah, opportunities. And, yeah. And, and, you know, like you said, I, I think, you know, the video as well could, you know, we as coaches don't get to see a lot of these kids other than when we're scouting. Correct. And when, when all you see in the paper or a write up, and I know you guys only can go with what you get um, and there's nothing wrong with points, but you know, when you go to a game, there's always three or four kids yes. that you watch that game and go, man, that kid yep. dominated the game, but he only had five points. Yeah. And I, and I always feel, and even, I mean, heck, I, you know, like I said, I'll put assists, I'll put rebounds, steals sometimes in those things. Sometimes kids don't even get those and they still dominate the game, just being, you know, getting loose balls and, and defensively. So, you know, when the media was at more games 10, 15 years ago, they were covering more of those games. I think those kind of kids used to get a little bit more, yes. a little bit more play. And, and not that it's about credit or what right. you no, no. talk about in the but media, it's, but it's but a team know. game. You know, it's right. not the guy that's scoring 30 all the time. It's the guy that's setting the screen, guy that's setting him up or, Got it sacrificing his body so that kid can get some points and things. So, hey, Coach, we are up against the clock. I appreciate it. Um, stay safe. I know you're working at the school and doing, doing a good job there, and you and I talked about that. So uh, we're looking forward to hopefully something in the summer, and, and, and we'll be in touch. Thank you. Thanks, Andy. Thanks, Dale. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Coach. Good Thanks, night. Andy. See you.